Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here. So let's continue playing as the Ukraine. So yesterday I attempted to pronounce the Ukraine, the word Ukraine, in Ukrainian, and I did not a great job. And that's okay. So I'm going to try it again and hurt your ears if you are a native Ukrainian. So the Ukraine, from my understanding, is somewhat, slightly pronounced kind of like Ukraina. 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 Something like that. Um, now, there was a term that someone wanted me to use in the, around pretty much every episode if, as long as I play as the Ukraine. And they told me to say, maybe perhaps, Slava Ukraini. Or Slava Ukra Ukraini. Something like that. I know my pronunciations aren't very good. But uh, it basically means glory to the Ukraine. And we'll do our best with. The lovely people of the Ukraine. So, uh, some more comments regarding that as we're just kind of waiting things out. We have initial, initial administrative reforms using the Faith and Nation, which is the Russian nationalists in the Ukraine, as well as organiza organization of the Ukrainian nationalists, which is uh, obviously Ukrainian nationalists. And they began to replace Hetman period officials in the regions en masse, somewhat upsetting the balance of the Rada. Surprisingly, this has had a very positive effect on our economy because eager new local governments are keen to solve the problems afflicting their own towns. Of course, the first steps of reform are underway. So, with this campaign, I will do my best to not spill too much Ukrainian blood. It's not my goal to, you know, become like the Hoi 4 AI and just destroy your manpower pool. Obviously, we can't do that. We have actually quite a few people, almost 40 million people of core eligible population here. But we still got to keep in mind that we are not a superpower right now. But the end goal for us is for me to basically own all of Russia, either as a puppet at, and me owning a lot of their territory or just outright annexing the entire thing. That'll be very cool. Um, One thing I just, I just thought of is Kolchak. Did he have anything to do with, like, the Cossack region or not? I forget, because in one of these mods, like, the Far Eastern Republic, maybe it was made of, like, Cossacks or something. This might be it. I can't exactly remember. Um... It might not be him. It might be someone else. I can't really remember, but that's okay. I really, really hope that the Russian Republic goes to war with Japan, but we'll see what happens, of course. Right now, as you can tell, we have no manpower, and that's... Normal. That's very normal, so... Uh, someone wanted me to really roleplay as the Ukraine, and um, and basically to do that, we are going to, going to be going down the OUN path, which is organization, the organization of Ukrainian nationalists, like what the focus said. And actually, I spent like an hour and a half trying to figure out what I was going to make for a thumbnail for this campaign. I know the thumbnail isn't great; it'll suffice for what we need, but. I actually spent a lot of time learning about Ukrainian history, especially, you know, regarding the 1920s, a little bit, maybe, maybe even during World War One to the 20s, 30s, 40s, and maybe even to the 50s a little bit, and learning about the OUN and maybe some of its sub-branches and a little bit of resurgent history within the past 10 years regarding the Ukraine. And of course, the Ukraine at the time of this video is still in the news because why not? But anyways. So there will be a civil war probably in Romania, because I did play this a little bit ahead of time. Oh no, this is, looks like a terrible... Oh no, 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 not Olsen, please, not Olsen, please. Um, I was going to talk about the Don Coupon Union, but no, 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 not Floyd B. Olsen, a dark horse candidate in an age of uncertainty. It appears that Floyd B. Olsen has carried the progressive ticket to its first national election victory in the U.S. history. The progressive platform Olsen campaigned on drew unprecedented allies from both Democrats and Republicans seeking an alternative to the populist and partisan hacks that they saw as tearing apart the nation. Reinvigorated with the news that his stomach cancer is in remission, Olsen boldly strides into the White House amidst protests from both the socialists and hardliners with the House or with the promise of fixing the economy, restoring national brotherhood, I don't care about Italy, and preventing political violence by any means necessary. We'll be watching your progress. Yeah, I mean, Italy is important, but... I think in the next update for Kaiserreich, it's going to be very important to see what happens in Italy because they might be able to annex each other or something or reform their nation anyways. Ooh, I'll see. I'm not even going to read this because it doesn't really matter. This happens every game. Can the Queen of the Adriatic survive? Well, actually, oh, that's why they revolted. We have Mr. You got some fierce eyes there. Jesus Christ, Italo Balbo. Oh, look, he's got a smile on him. 
That's kind of a nice smile. Look at that hairline. Ooh. Very nice. And, of course, they're going to go to war with each other. But, oh, why? The progressive... Oh, no. 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 Mr. Minnesota, please. No. He was a Shabos goal. Despite his rural upbringing, Floyd Olson has been able to see the, greatly, the great diversity in America through travel and activism. Working as a... Can I say that G-word? Shabos Goy? Because I know that's kind of like... If you're on the various parts of the internet that I'm a part of, you see that term somewhat occasionally. But, you know, whatever. This is still YouTube and they might kick you off if you don't like if they don't like you. But whatever. Cool. 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 But then again, I am also uploading to BitChute, so I don't care. Goy. Ooh. But back to the Ukraine. U Ukraina. I said that wrong. But um, I was looking at 1919, the his supposed lands claimed by the Ukraine in 1919, which included, I believe, maybe a little bit of probably Bessarabia, uh, obviously parts of Galicia Lodomeria, which we will try to annex peacefully if we can. I don't want to, you know, bleed too many men and trying to acquire this, but things might happen. But the Don Kuban Union was very interesting because I saw that the Ukraine had, oh, Liberia, Liberia joined the Reichs Pact, but the Ukraine actually had, like, claims on Kuban, as well as Rostov, and maybe even Ust Medvis... I can't even say that. U.M. The U.M. Yeah, the U.M. Um, Bielgorod, perhaps, maybe in Kursk? I don't... I don't know. But I do know at least their capital in the Don Kuban Union was theirs, or claimed, as well as Rostov, and probably this part as well, the U.M. So that's actually really, really cool. So right now, we have... Not a terrible amount of stability considering that Black Monday has hit. Now, the goal to play is Ukraine in Kaiserreich that I've discovered, at least as a point, patch point 0.9.3, is really you don't want Poland to get a Habsburg. You really don't. If anything, it's okay if they go down that way as long as they don't join with Austria. Because Aust I don't. I want Poland as a puppet because then you can kind of control what they do. And then, ooh, Lessons of the Empire. But, uh, yeah, they do that. That's really not something that's advisable because you need Polish divisions to help you f fight off Russia. That's really my goal, to have Poland under me. And then, of course, you can split up Galicia Lodomeria, which I'll take most of that, probably. Um, it's just, Poland was kind of a strategy or way to take or help bolster our defenses against Russia. Russia... Kaiserreich overall is just different every time you play, so one strategy might not work for everyone. So, cool. I've already read that, so the Faith of Nations, of course, is the Russian Nationalist, and the Organization of the Ukrainian Nationalists, of course, is the OUN, who we care much more deeply about, because Church and Nation, no, 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 no VIN here, no, 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 no. We're going to requisition Polish farms. A number of Polish landlords control land in Western and Central Ukraine for historical, historical reasons. Since Poland is decidedly weak now, we can easily confiscate their estates, expel these Poles, and redistribute their lands among the Ukrainian peasants. This should also coincidentally appeal to national supporters of both stripes that generally detest the Polish minority. More stability, thank you, and a little bit more infrastructure. Now, I have a question for us. Can I go to war? No, I need world tension to be at 75% because authoritarian Democrats need world tension to be at 75% for some unknown reason. Hmm. Now, I was going to say that I have been thinking about doing a campaign in Kaiserreich, but playing as either Lithuanian common, Lithuania or as the United Baltic Duchy. I could play as either one of these two nations, and what I could do is, you see that they have the Germanization focus for the United Baltic Duchy. I could try to Germanize and then integrate into the German Empire and then begin playing as a German Empire in the same campaign and see what the AI has done to Germany. That'd be kind of cool. Maybe even annex Lithuania. Maybe go from Lithuania to integrate into the United Baltic Duchy to integrate into the German Empire. Now, that would be very cool. But another thing about playing as the Ukraine in Kaiserreich that I have discovered is that you want to get into wars early. Early, early. You want Germany to get into wars, really. So that way, if Germany goes to war early and calls in the rest of the Reichspakt with you along with it, that means that you can potentially get some supplies sent to you by Germany or her allies. For example, Lithuania, White Ruthenia, United Baltic Duchy might send you supplies like guns. I was going to say guns and beer, 
but really guns, artillery, planes, and stuff that you need, or we, we need, to build up our military, because... Oh, hello there. This is what I was talking about earlier. We need ways to build up our military. So, Carol II likes us. Really, in the end, we really need Condreno. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Condreno, I think, or something like that. The Conducator. The Conductor? Undisputed leader. So eventually, we're going to become national populist with the OUM. But if I ally Romania now, that might be good to serve as a buffer between me and the Austro Hungarians, or the Austrian Empire, really. That might be worth doing that. I might do that just because we need we need army XP. I need army XP so we can edit some of these divisions. That could potentially get us some more air experience. And, of course, maybe some experience for these units that don't really have a lot of manpower. Man, I've done a lot of talking, the Romanian Civil War. Either way, that won't be good for the oil, obviously. Now, before I move on, does Romania, the Kingdom of Romania, have... No, it does not have a regular focus tree. Do you? You kind of do. Ah, uh, Pleblesite and Dobrogia. Claim Dobrogia. Conquer Transylvania. Greater Romania. Oh, that's really cool. Gains co cores on all previously claimed territories that are now conquered. Everything for the country. Well, really everything for your country, because if not, oh well. Crush the monarchists. Can I send uh, divisions to either side? Well, let's see. Who are my strongest ten divisions? Nobody. Alright. What type of guys are you? I want to send guys with artillery. There's my boys. All right. Um, fort attack. Could I send divisions to you? I know you don't like us. Ah. Uh, well, hold on. Let's see. Well, because Austria is social conservative. Oh, good old Kaiser Karl. <sighs> hmm. It really doesn't matter to me right now. So. Actually, if we go with the Kingdom of Romania, they do not have a regular focus tree. That means they cannot core new territories if they were to acquire them in the future. Now, obviously, they have a core in Bukovina, but other than that, and these territories down here, but they don't have... Eh, they have cores down here, or claims at least. They have claims, but the Iron Guard Romania has cores on Transylvania and all the rest of these territories, which they can core, of course, which means that they will be stronger. So if I help right now the Kingdom of Romania that's easier to take out than the Iron Guard Romanians. See, I'm thinking like, really trying to think way ahead here, so I'll help the Kingdom of Romania, but in the end, they're probably just going to be a puppet. That, that took me probably a little bit too long for me to think about what was going on. Just go ahead and minus 100. There you go. Um, I'll send a few planes. Because they could probably use it, and we might be able to use some army X. Oh, they have more than double our planes. Okay, then. But we have some planes in reserve, so that's actually not too bad. So next up, we have radio. We have already got partial mobilization. What we need to do next is go to limited conscription for at least getting some sort of manpower. That's very, 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 very important. It's 1937. Happy 1937, everyone. What we're going to do next is... Uh, build or more factories? Well, actually, we already have 15 civilian factories right now, so if I can help increase the production or construction of more buildings faster and faster, that would be very, very important. Yes, I can make more artillery pieces and guns, but I think this is more important. Ooh, and besides, we got some of this stuff too, but who cares? Let's do both at the same time. Also, I did choose to disperse. Oh, God. Intervene in the Romanian Civil War. So, with no manpower, the Civil War in Romania presents us with an opportunity to destroy the Iron Guard by offering support to the pro-monarchist circles. Shall we help them? We're not interested. Uh, I'll lose a thousand manpower, which means nothing, and a thousand guns, which means not very much. I will help them. I've already sent them supplies and stuff, so... Alright, I gave you a thousand guns for my supplies, so... I don't know where those came from, but I didn't give anything to you. Uh... Do these guys want to lose? I think, actually... Oh. These guys might want to lose. Because they're not guarding their... Guys, there's... Open tile here. Please don't use Jassy. Lose Yassy? Jassy? Whatever you pronounce it. Ooh. Oh. Uh, bing, bing. Hold on. Ah, uh, my cat is clawing at the door. The carpet. No. Bing, bing. Bing, bing. No. Bing, bing. 
Come on, baby. Come on. Binky. Binky. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Yeah. You lonely, Binky? Yeah, he's a little lonely since Mocha left. Yeah, Mimi. Yeah, come on. All right, cool. Uh, sorry for that disruption. Binky is... He's been a little uppity, I'll say, since Mocha has passed, but... All right, a few days left until we can get our divisions over here to help hold the line. Oh, there we go. Stand off in America. Taking control over the government from democratically elected president. Oh. Oh, they actually have all of Texas there. Now, we'll see that... That should remain with the American Union state. Nice, very good. I want to see how much land the combined syndicates of America gets, and whether or not New England actually forms, because the last time I played Kaiserreich, in my own time, New England didn't form, and actually stayed with the federal government, which was kind of interesting to see. Also, let's make sure we get these guys some more uh, experience. Um, really, my goal is to defend. That's really my main thing. Skoro, Skoropadsky. Logistics wizard. Yeah, just dig in, boys. That's all I need you to do. Ah, dang it, guys. I need you to really, like, to please defend your line. I mean, I accept divisions to help you, but uh, you have four divisions there. Oh, and the Germans are here, too. Oh, but they're probably just going through here. Are the Germans at war with anybody? And yes, I know some people said that, um... Oh, you're actually defending the line. Maybe, maybe not. Do not spill any Ukrainian blood, but I will say this. This is all for the end game. This is all for the end game. Just Okay, the Russians are here as well. But where are you going? Oh, you're over there. Alright, well, I kinda wish I could see what was happening. But oh well. Red Bink. You doing okay? You having a good day? Also, I have no cough here. I already drank all of it since I was trying to practice my pronunciations earlier. Ooh. And I know my pronunciations pronunciations was not very, very bueno. But see, Romania, you have some divisions, some manpower. It's weird to see this much manpower now coming back from Old World Blues. But, oh, that's not a lot of manpower. And about the same amount of divisions. Entrenched party, very good. Serbia crowns King Alexander II. Okay. Serbia, what are you up to, Binky? Yeah, you okay? Yeah. Oh, he oh that's definitely a different picture than I remember him having. Red Bink, you alright? You wanna get some rub? Get some rub? Get rubbed? Crown the king. Glory to the king. A strong state. Ultimatum to Bulgaria. Congress of Belgrade. A Slavic Federation. Hmm. That sounds like you might be able to include Ukraine in there sometime, but... That'd be cool. Ooh, there we go. Requisition Polish Farms. Patriotic Spirit. Very good. Very nice. Let's go to our own. We could do new Ukrainian army, but... We're a little busy with our own things. Now, I don't like pro Prozvita movement. Unfortunately, a sizable percentage of our population uses the Russian language, despite the fact that the government doesn't recognize it as a, at a state level for use in national institutions. To combat this, the organization of Ukrainian nationalists has proposed to invest in a Prozvita, or education, movement. The aim of Prozvita is to spread Ukrainian language and culture throughout the country as well as abroad. Ah, uh, very nice. Very good. So please, come on, we gotta get some more uh, political power there. Right, Bink? Yeah, that's right, man. You okay? Yeah? Oh, that second American Civil War. Oh, the Pacific States actually went and liberated themselves. Oh, nope. The American Union State's very, very weak. Oh, the American Union State's probably gonna die because the combined syndicates took Iowa, Minnesota, as well as New Jersey, and even New York City. But they didn't... New England didn't spawn. Interesting. So, Harry, Huey Long, I'm sorry. As much as we love you, you might not survive this. Uh, Pacific States of America under John Arthur Gellaty. I've never played as a Pacific States before. Uh, combined Syndicates under Mr. Pronounced Jack Reed. And then, of course, Mac Daddy. Oh, oh I can't read that. Yeah, the American Union State isn't probably going to win. Oh, well, that's fine. Oh! Panama joined the on. Okay, someone got a little stripped. Hello. It looks like Hungary looks a little small and the Austrian Empire is a little, a little large. Oh, never mind. It became a little thinner. Um. Well, hello, Transylvania. I've not really seen your colors since I played Furrerreich. 
Oh, I wish they didn't get rid of Transylvania. Furreg has been in an interesting state for a while. We have Slovakia now. Ooh. Ooh, man. I forgot. Ungvar is basically a core of Galicia Lodomeria. Now, if I could annex Galicia Lodomeria, I need to annex Ungvar as well. I forgot about that. It's interesting, though, that Hungary did not give up southern Slovakia. Or as well as German West Hungary, also known as was it Bargainland or something like that. And it's also very interesting to see that Austria has kept this. Now, obviously, they don't want to give it to Serbia, but Illyria has this as a core state. You okay, Bink? Yeah? Yeah? You okay? Oh, Illyria, you're very socially... In well, you're fairly liberal. Either market liberal or socially liberal. All right, very interesting. What we need. Oh, we're going with that. Very nice. I love playing as Austria and Kaiserreich. It's so much fun just being a... A relative power and then trying to figure out what you need to do we're doing better on guns we have a nice stockpile of artillery um, so yeah for this I'm not really concerned about attacking I just want to defend that's really my main goal goodness gracious guys there's a hole here in your line that is no point it's weird to see the Russian Republic and the German Empire both working together right Bink? that's right buddy that's right. Cool. Obviously, low manpower. Stability is doing better, though. That's actually pretty good. 61% during, you know, a depression era type of thing. Event. History. Timeline. Not bad. Hmm. Mm, right, Bink? We gotta drink some water, too. Yeah, I mean, you doing okay? Yeah. So, it looks like Australia is here, and they are... Oh, no. Never mind. I thought that was Canada. No, I thought that was Australia, but it's actually Canada. Syndicalism spreads to the Philippines, even in Asia. Liberalism isn't safe. Uh, actually, how much political power? Oh, we can almost get limited conscription. Right, Bink? He's looking up at me right now as I'm talking. Binky, it's okay. Just take a nap. All you do is take a nap and eat. Anyways, even though we really should play with it more. Pros Vita. Yeah, I haven't gone through many of these focuses yet. Come on, Romania. Or one of you Romanians. Hit me. Hit me hard. I want... I need some army XP. Oh, we have some air XP. Nice. Second international. Interesting. So Norway joined the third international. And stuff is going on in Argent... Or South America. Not Argentina. Well, Argentina, yes. But I'm not really interested in South America right now. Then again, I usually am never interested in South America. Most people aren't. Two Sicilies joined the Reichspact. Good. Very good. Hmm. Very interesting that... The combined syndicates took this area out. Huh. Oh, the Prozvita movement. Very nice. Resettlement. The Ukrainian nation is still divided, and even though Ukraine itself has been an independent country for almost 20 years, we should address this situation by resettling peasants from western Ukraine to the east, where they will become workers in the Donbass industrial region. This will also serve to bring Ukrainian ideas and traditions into this unfriendly OUN region. Ah, uh, yes, resettlement. This is almost... Uh, I don't want to say that word. Uh, but this is resettlement. Yes. Resettlement. Right, Bing Bing? You're doing okay? He's just kind of looking at my bookshelf. I'm not sure why. Oh, wait. I missed this. Solidify control. I mean, that's not bad, but... We could get more political power that way. But I think I could use a little bit more... A few more boys here. Also, I did think I noticed this. The language immersion project. It does go away eventually. Which will be good for us. So that we can get our factories back. There's a militarist revolt in... Um, Paraguay. But I think this does go away over time. Oh, the Tsardom was restored. This is, I'm going to read this because this is important. Created in the last year of the Valkyrie, appears to have only lasted 20 years before its end. Plagued by the disorder, political agitation, and ineffective governance in recent years, the Republic lost the support of the people and state news agencies now report that his successor to Nicholas II has been crowned Tsar of all Russias. While it is not known what the international priorities of this reborn Russian Empire are, or even if the coronation of the Tsar will calm the turbulent nation, Numerous monarchs across the world have already congratulated the Romanovs on regaining their divine birthright. But how long will they last? Well, I'll tell you this. They're not going to last five years. Well, okay, maybe they'll last five years, but not seven years. No, 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 no. Seven or eight years, no. Dimitri III. Oh, the paternal autocrats. Yeah, you're not going to last that long. You can try to whoop me as much as you want, but mm -mm, it ain't going to last. Some would say we might need a little bit of... Uh, Ukrainian Lebens round, but we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Ooh, the 1937 Dutch elections. All right, interesting. They do love their elections, right, Bing? Come on. Yeah, he's now he's now he's on my bed. Every episode, 
he always does interesting things, we'll say. All right, I really put you guys over here to help defend, but... Um... Wait. Oh, boy. What? Demand Haut Savoy. Well, then, Commune of France, if you want to come kill us, then go kill Germany. I, I'm not ready for a war. Germany isn't ready for a war with their stability. Their manpower is pretty good. Their divisions, well, they have more than uh, the French. Now, we'll see what happens here in Flanders and Wallonia. Usually, they can, like, just explode and turn into Flanders as well as Wallonia or Belgium. Oh, they evaluate the state budget. Ooh. Reform the voting system. I don't know if it was, it was already supposed to happen, but usually this country goes kaboom. It might still happen. It might not. And yeah, the rest is just other stuff. Cool. Hopefully we don't get into an early war. I'm really hoping we don't get into an early war. So, that would not be very good for us. Well, actually, really, I mean an early war against the Commune of France. I want to wait for that, but even if we do get into an early war with the Commune of France, that shouldn't really be a problem, as I'm noticing we're getting more and more manpower. Yes! Uh, ooh! The United Baltic Duchy declared war on Estonia, as well as Latvia. A blow to the Reichs Pact for sure. Oh, well, that's okay. Well, sorry about your problems, guys, but I'm not really interested in helping, even though I actually kind of am. Can I join your war? Please let me join your war. No, I need to join your war, please. I need someone to give me guns. I need military resources. Um, improved machine tools, more efficiency cap, thank you. These guys should do okay. Ooh, col colonial reform in Middle Africa. Um, let's see. Reform Grupa has been has made the bold decision to overhaul Middle Africa's Byzantine system of rule dominated by colonies, puppets, and kingdoms. Let's see. Oh, what are they doing? Let's see this first. Um, it's 1937. And we definitely, absolutely have to prioritize things that will benefit us the absolute most. Radar could be very good, but artillery... We can do ar this artillery stuff during a war or right before war. So is there anything that we need to produce that could help us win in a battle? That we can make, because we don't have a ton of factories. Resource-wise... 10% bonus to rubber and tungsten does nothing. That would be a waste to do. So, I'm thinking maybe a plane. How are our planes? Pretty good on planes. Air Doctrine? If I use planes, I don't even have tactical bombers. Maybe ships? Not really going to use ships either. Screw it, just do artillery. That's pretty basic. But what is Middle Africa up to? It's a very nice Middle Africa. Very nice. Now, who's in charge? Theodore von Hassel. Look at that stash. <gasps> this is one of the guys that still has a hat. Now, if you're on the Reddit like me a lot, you notice that the devs for Kaiserreich like to remove hats at the time of this recording. And dang, I like that hat. That's really cool. Very cool. Social conservative. Um, military budget. Border raids. That's not good. Social liberal support. Market liberal support. Stability <laughs> isn't very good. Uh-oh. And how much longer do we have until this kind of breaks? Oh! Finland joined the Reichs Pact. Very nice. Halfway through that. And we're just kind of here holding a line as we are just kind of hanging out. We're having a good time in Romania. Yeah. Alright, so what do we need? We need more guns, which is good. Oh! Oh, snap! That's not good. Um, This is one of the rare times where I've seen... The Baltic states themselves get taken out by Estonia and Latvia. This is almost radically different than what I experienced before. Okay, now the German Empire is getting involved. Can I help you? I don't mind leaving Romania. That means I can help you, Germany. No. God dang it. Come on, Germany. Oh, and that means their divisions in Romania left as well. Resettlement, very nice. Crisis in the coalition. So, though the syndicalist threat has mostly melted away due to government reforms, the Russian nationalists and the Organization for Ukrainian Nationalists have gained too much popularity among the citizens of Ukraine and their followers are inadvertently 
violently splitting our country apart with their nationalistic fervor. This situation cannot continue as the situation in Europe is quickly deteriorating. We lose a little bit of stability, but at 71%, that's not bad. Now, I don't really want to... Committing my soldiers here really would be kind of a waste. I'm really here just mostly to, to defend. So we'll see what happens. And the Romanians are thinking that, you know what? Let's let everyone else fight our battles for me, including the Japanese. So I'm not going to commit any soldiers until I have my regular army filled up with men. Oh, look at all that green. I like it. It'll be interesting to see what happens with the Baltic states once they come back. But the Lithuanians are involved, but... I want to join Germany, why not? Man. Why Why you say no? Yeah, you, Germany, you might want to hurry up with that, because you might have a slight chance to be at war with the French. Oh, there's a fleet. It looks like the Ostasian fleet as well. How's the Civil War in America going? Syndicalism spreads to Burma, pretty normal. Oh, wait. The Russian Empire didn't declare war on them. The Alash Orda did. Good. Alash Orda, please um, give Russia a run for its money, even though you have no divisions. Oh, the crisis was resolved. Uh, characterizes a demand to end the persecution of the French population. They avoided the war, and they transferred the province. Oh, you Swiss. This is why no one likes the Swiss in this timeline. But the Venetians are kicking some butt right now. Well, relatively. Come on, Italo Balbo, you can't lose like this. I need a po national populist ally in the future. Okay, so this is interesting to see. So right now, we already have a limited conscription, which is good. And I will end the episode soon. Um, partial mobilization, that's what we wanted. So at this point, we might go ahead and get daily political power. Since, you know, sol solidify control is okay. But it doesn't give us that much. Besides, this can give us slightly more daily political power in exchange as well for a little bit more encryption, which encryption is always very, very nice to have. Oh, the Japanese nearly got surrounded, encircled, and destroyed. Oh, actually, how much manpower? I'm almost out of needing extra manpower. Tanks, though. Yeah, yeah, I don't really need tanks that much. Oh, that is definitely not good. Oh, and Pinky is sleepy on my bed. Uh, is it worth fighting this battle? It's not really worth fighting that battle. There's no point to. Alright. You can come in that way, maybe, perhaps. Latvia is gone. And... You know what? We could use a little bit of army XP. This division could use it. We do not have air superiority. But we are trying to knock out some of their bombers. And this will give us some arm slight, slight, slight army XP that we could... Okay, never, never mind. They added another division there. So, I'm going to do this then. Which means I'm going to come down here, maybe. And you come, like, right there. And circle two divisions, if we can, and destroy them. Estonia is now gone. Good. Good. Fill in that line. Begin destruction of two Romanian divisions. Oh, that's not going to last for very long. If anything, I'm actually going to get cut off. Oh, that's not good. I got cut off. So that's not good. So instead, you're going to attack this way as well. Don't worry, my friends. We will fix this. These enemy divisions probably aren't going to last very long. And the Romanians baited, baited me into that. But we'll probably focus on that next time because we're all out of time. Don't worry. Next time, these divisions, this division will not be lost. But anyways, thank you very much for watching, guys. Leave a like if you like the video. We have the United Baltic Duchy back under a very pink social democrat but paternal autocrat government. Leave a subscribe if you're new. And I will see you tomorrow after you check out my Discord link as we begin to really continue building up our nation in preparation for future endeavors. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you all have a great, great day.